but today I've got a linear XY stage and uh, this is the X axis. It's actually a brushless motor with uh, magnets and um, you know several pairs of magnets so there's several electrical cycles. It's using a Renishaw sine cosine encoder for feedback and then this is the Y stage and its stroke is about uh, about an inch and it's it's just two wires it's a voice coil so one magnet um, and uh, one coil gives you about maybe less than an inch of travel at most it's not exactly linear you know so you just got to make sure you're tuning at the each end and in the middle is is still stable and, and another Renishaw coming back um, what I noticed about this system was there wasn't a good grounding for the, the chassis, uh, except for the shield of the motor cable. It didn't have a green wire, but they hooked up the shield to ground. And, and that helps a little bit. You can see the noise comes down when you, you hook the shield up to ground. But that's not a good path to earth for the stage. When you, when you mount the stage to the frame, then you get a good path to earth. So you can see, you know, much better when the frame actually goes to earth, uh, you don't you don't pick up so much noise on the stage. I'm just measuring, you know, what's ambient on the stage there. So um, that's just a little trick for checking out the noise. I, it's not the whole system, but it, it's good to look at. I'm using a, a BP2 today because it's one drive that does two motors. Uh, one's a voice coil, and one's a one's a single phase voice coil. One's a three phase brushless. So We'll take a quick peek at this. Um, but first, one inch in uh, American is 2.54 millimeters in European. That's important when you want to know what the pitch or pair of magnet length is. Uh, so the stage itself, uh, these are typical precision stages. Uh, with these, the, This one has sine cosine, but Renishaw makes all manner of feedback. Um, but they have like a single phase and three phase different stroke lengths and resistance and inductance uh, are specified in the data sheet. So I just downloaded the data sheet and you can see, you know, all the normal characteristics people need for understanding their motor. Um, Foxborough, Massachusetts. So I, I visited them once. Uh, they've used Copley in the past, so might as well give them a plug. Um, and so to look at the BP2, of course, there's a sine cosine, uh, two wires twisted, shielded. If there's an index, we can hook it up, or if there's limit switches, I'll show you that in a minute. But we show the shield connected to pin one. The shield is not connected to the motor case, okay? And then down here, we show the motor case connected to earth and the shield connected to earth. Um, Okay, you can hook up the shield to the motor case, that's fine, but the shield it shouldn't be the only path to earth. You know, you should directly connect the motor case to earth or, or run a, another wire, like the frame ground wire. This motor only had two wires and they used the shield. That, yeah, you saved the wire, but eh, you know, how good is that shield? Uh, it's probably okay, right? They're experts, they know what they're doing. It just seems wrong to me. Um, so anyways, anything you can do to improve, put the motor case to earth and, and, and that, that should nail it. Um, there's also, uh, a brush, uh, way to wire up a DC brush motor. That's like a voice coil in the data sheet. We don't say voice coil, but in the software we do, but you see this wire, you, you don't hook this wire up for a two wire motor. Okay. So U and U and V, you connect your coil to U and V like a, like a brush motor. Okay. And then the case of the motor going to earth and the shield going to earth and the feedback shield not connected to the motor case, but finding a path to earth. Uh, oh, and earth at the drive. Not only the case of the drive, all cases must find a path to earth. But the minus side of the power supply, you know, you should you should connect earth at the drive, not like a mile away at the power supply or three feet away. If you're going to deliver large amounts of current, this is not a large amount of current here, maybe an amp. At the most, so may, you know, not so bad. Nice fat wire, you're good. But just earth at the drive. Um, so we'll take a look at CME here, and um, 
So the axis A will step through that here. Uh, I'm going to change settings. So brushless, linear. Uh, got an analog feedback. There's no halls. Why don't we put halls on there? Well, it's extra cost and extra wires. and It's not that much more. You don't have to do a wiggle. It's okay. We can do the algorithmic phasing. It's no problem. You know, but if you have an all, if you have a hall option, get halls. 20 microns, five uh, is the pitch for the sign. Um, skipping around here, but this is from the tonic, tionic, not bionic or ironic. Uh, that's Vionic is incremental, Resolute is bis C. Uh, the tonic has an option for sine cosine. There's the little connector thing with a circuit in it, I presume, that gives you either uh, incremental, you know, or sine cosine. We can interpolate, we can get you down to five nanometers, no problem, right? And you can go pretty fast too. There's a limit to the speed based on the resolution. Um, but I think the important thing for these little stages is good, good shielding. So there's an outer shield goes to frame or earth and then the inner shield that can go to zero volts, the same as the five volt supply return. So two shields, inner shield goes to zero volts, outer shield goes to earth. Make sure all shields find a path to earth. That's important. Uh, this is what the sine cosine looks like, one volt peak to peak. Fundamental sine wave is 20 microns. You know, looking at it quadraturally, that's five microns. They have a, a reference pulse, which is like an index, or they have a limit switch. So either end can do a limit. And so you could home to the limit. I did home to a hard stop. So uh, I didn't check to see if we had wired the index, but it's digital, right? So just hook that up to the X and X knot or the limit switch input, depending on what you have. So you see how 20 divided by 4 is 5, and then the interpolation is 1024. There's more crazy interpolation, but let's, you know, let's not go too crazy here. It's an analog signal, so you're only going to have a certain number of effective bits anyway. So 5 nanometers sounds pretty good for a sine cosine. Uh, ether cap mode, emulate it out. You know, if you want a meter a second at 5 nanometer, that's, you know, almost... 500 mega megahertz so maybe that's not such a good idea um so we'll take a look at we entered the data for the motor here and we hit calculate and that produced some current loop tuning so we can see um ah we have to phase first sorry it just jumped right in and started uh tuning it was not phased you see not phased right so have to enable it, give it a moment to do the little wiggle algorithm. Uh, there's an uh, option to pick, uh, you know, for, for phasing, you can check your, you know, when I go forward, give it a little bit more than uh, the smallest amount of 10% current. But when you go forward, counts need to go more positive. And when you go reverse, counts go down. You can invert the motor or invert the feedback to get it to agree. And I set the phase ramp to two amps instead of four amps for peak. I'm using a little more than continuous, but it's fine. And I said, don't give up. You know, maybe you hit the hard stop and you want to like try applying phase current in the other direction and it'll go the other way. So you can test the phase in it here under all these, you know, crazy conditions, make sure it works. But at the end, after the phasing is done, it's, it's phased. Um, so we can take a look at motor phase is okay. And I should be able to do something like home. I'm gonna go home to a hard stop negative, slow, then fast, and I'm gonna offset it back to the middle. So it's moving to the hard stop, hits the hard stop, backs up to the, to the middle about an inch or 25.4 millimeters, which is the magnetic pair length. Um, save and, or exit. Uh, so let's just check the, yeah, 25.4 millimeters is the electrical cycle. You, you can tell as you rotate the manual phase through one dial rotation, you go about 25.4 millimeters or about an inch. Um, so it's not multiple cycles, so accuracy is 
that's what it says in the uh, the data sheet or a specification. So um, I think I think we're good to go uh, with that. And so we'll take a little a, a, a peek at the tuning here. And so these are just the calculated values uh, for the current velocity and position. So there's a nice amount of current response. Uh, let me see if I can jog this thing back down to the positive direction here. And uh, we'll do a little velocity loop. Uh, I put it to the middle so I can go back and forth. You know, if it's, if it's a larger mass, you know, just lower the frequency and don't move so far or so fast. I mean, you can impose some limits on your XL decel. That's kind of steep, but there's no mass. so. I think that's okay. And uh, let's take a look to see what that does. So back and forth, uh, it's reading the trace data. It's gonna display it there. Um, while it's still jogging, I can press stop trace and current, actual current, and then hit record. And it'll show you what the current used to accelerate at 400, uh, 4,800 millimeters a second, about 1.5 amps or, you know, probably within the continuous range. So, I mean, the bottom stage also has the top stage on it. So it's moving a little bit more mass. Um, and then for a profile move, that's one full electrical cycle. We'll cut that down, just make a short little move. Auto setup checkbox short little move, you can look at the current, but uh, we'll see the stage move in the positive. You can repeat and reverse, so go forward, go back, and you can look at the settling time and you can do a little bit more tuning to uh, get a better settling state, but um, I'm gonna move on to the next axes here, which is the, the B axes, and we can see in the B axes, it's a voice coil linear motor, with all the same uh, data, except for the motor data is a little bit different. And uh, you put this in, you hit calculate. Um, I was getting some zero values, but I, you know, I, I doubled them and then cut them in half so it was stable during tuning, and and now I'm good good to go. Um, but again, you know, you got a current loop uh, and, and a position loop. Um, this I've been playing with the tuning here, so by default that's a a thousand and then you got tracking windows you want to bring those back down to something smaller to make sure you get in the target window but so this is just to get you started for tuning um, so again it's uh five nanometers so if you're plus or minus a millimeter that's a lot of counts right so it really depends on the application how accurate do you want to be uh, you want to be plus or minus two counts or plus or minus ten counts um, so that'll 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 characterize the type of tuning that you're going to do. So thank you.